Hello everybody, how you doing today? It's Superfiend here and welcome back to our Total War Three Kingdoms playthrough in a world betrayed as the White Tiger, Yan Bai Hu. Last episode, we, well we started last episode uh, with an ambush battle against the Yellow Turban Rebellion. We completely wiped out that force and then over the course of the episode it became apparent that the best course of options would be to take our army our second army that was recruiting and not full strength and bring them over here, hoping to draw this second yellow turban army away from our fishing port. And in that same uh, effort to draw them away from the fishing port, I also recruited uh, Xiang Fang out of the court and raised him up here as a retinue in the uh, in the fishing port or as a standing army i guess would be a better way to say that i did all that other like i i recruited him and raised him up rather quickly because uh my wife was texting me she had a small a small emergency in the kitchen one of the breakers flipped and she didn't know how to get like the power back on and she was in the middle of making lunch for the kids so you know panic panic maximum panic and um i'm recording back to back so i just got back from the kitchen not that you care I have myself an adult beverage, and let's go ahead and do a video here. I think we can catch these guys. Uh, what's your name? Liu Ji, Liu Jai, Yao Ba, and Tang Xian. I think we can catch them here. That's going to uh, benefit our mercenary contract. It seems to go down by quite a bit uh, per turn. Is it showing me how much it goes down by turn? It's at 47 minus 4 per turn. So every time we win a battle against them, it seems to climb up by, I don't know, 12 or so. But then it seems to take a few turns before we can catch them again. Oh, please tell me that Yan Bai Hu can catch up to this guy in a force march. Good. Uh, this guy, like, almost can. So what we're going to do is we're going to get right up under tail. Hey, you didn't know that Yan Bai Hu was here as well. Get right on them. And we outnumber them by quite a bit. So I'm going to delegate this against my better judgment. Uh oh. And the auto resolve rewards our poor decision making skills with a close victory. Uh, but 35 fame and fortune. And Sillery's getting. Okay, income from peasantry. Oh my gosh, there's we're getting so many ancillaries out of them. I am going to take the replenishment on this one. I'm going to take that replenishment because I really feel like right now we need it. And then we can't really catch up to them. Yan Bai Hu has used up most of his movement. Can I replenish an enemy territory with this? I can't. Uh, but now we've taken so many casualties that pushing on and taking the the actual lumber, lumber yard is going to be difficult. Uh, so let's see. Well, I want to make sure that we're reinforcing each other. And please, please, please don't tell me that these guys have night battles. And they're going to somehow pull a rabbit out of their pocket or their magician's hat and catch us in a night battle and, like, destroy one of our armies. It doesn't look like that's possible. Now, what is this thing? A south-pointing chariot. Well, what happens if you just turn it around? <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny right now. Okay, uh, is there anybody that <laughs> has really bad <laughs> has really bad satisfaction that we can um, give that to? Yes, this guy that we just picked up. Uh, he doesn't want the clay ox anymore. No, he wants a south pointing chariot <laughs> that apparently can't be turned around. Plus ten satisfaction. Cool. Uh, let's see here. What else do we got? Oh, authority and morale. We don't own either of those set items. Okay, sure. Why not? And then, oh, you know what? We have like an available administrator slot, but we've already got 
or we've only got two settlements, so we can't really deploy additional administrators right now, can we? Okay, and our small city at Sindhu is done. Fortunately, because I am a master planner, our food is exactly zero. <laughs> so what are we going to build next here? Uh, need, need money. Money. Income from commerce, probably a good choice. But if I go down this this venture, this path, uh, we'll be out of money soon. So uh, really, it'd be a good idea to recall this retinue and, and get him out of here. But then he's going to be grumpy because he doesn't have anything to do. So I don't want to do that necessarily. So uh, what do we have in the, what's the tribute hall do again? Post-battle income loot. Post-battle loot income. And then reduced construction cost. Probably for the commandery only, right? And then what does this do again? Prestige, research rate, and corruption. Mm, I'm not feeling that right now. We can upgrade this and get increased income from banditry and lower our public order... No, lower public order in adjacent commanders. I don't know why, but when I read this, I never see the adjacent. I don't see the text in parentheses. It's like my brain just pretends it's not there. It's like an advertisement on a web page. Brain is just like, nope, doesn't exist. It's not there. Uh, what does this cost? Uh, only gets us 100 income from commerce. <laughs> so either we build the tribute hall lowering construction costs by let's be honest here 10% because I'm not going to build this one for a while it's too expensive uh, and increase our post battle loot income ever so slightly ever so slightly okay you know what I'm going to do it for 820 just to build something And then we're going to end our turn because we can't really do much else right now. Okay. Let's see. Let's see what they do. This might actually offset the cost of becoming his vassal. But no, we have a coalition going right now. And if we can invite other factions into our coalition... Then it improves our bandit network and research rate, or it reduces the cost of researching things, which will speed up the turns it takes to to actually research them. Uh oh, loyal versus dutiful. You host two friends for dinner who, between meals, engage in lively discussion about the nature of loyalty. One argues that loyalty to one's lord is the very purpose of life, whilst the other posits that heavenly demand that heaven demands our loyalty and that heaven is above any one man. They talk and you listen. Uh, well, you know, I really think duty is the best choice here because uh, we want the relationship to deepen between Yan Bai Hu and his brother, Yan Yu, right? That makes sense. And since I'm staring at the word duty, I'm going to share with you a joke from my, um, how old is she now? She's eight, I think, my eight-year-old, almost eight-year-old. She's going to be eight uh, next month. Why did Superman flush the toilet? Because it was his duty. <laughs> I love that joke. That's a great one. She hit me with that like the other night, totally out of the blue, and I just couldn't stop laughing. It was too funny. Uh, we're going to be bankrupt next turn, and we also suddenly have 10 extra food, which leads me to believe we can trade food with somebody. A recent food trade has ended, so we want to find somebody like Gong Soon Zan here who is classified as rich in money but very poor in food. Apparently it's a lie. Now we're already trading with Liu Bao. You know, I think we were trading food with Liu Bu. I think that's who it was. Kong Rong always has plenty of food. 
he's he's got a pretty good little peninsula here. I, I think there's there's a, a farm here, a livestock farm there, a fishing port here. So there's like three or four little commanderies or provinces there, regions, regions that have uh, immediate access to food. Uh, rich and very poor, and we're at war with him. So this might be how we finally end this. No, it's not. I was hoping it could be. Very rich and very poor. Oh my gosh, that's even better. <gasps> Ooh. Okay, so this is positive 10. Does he have ancillaries? No. Now let's see how rich is very rich. Exactly, it's very rich. <laughs> Holy crap. 3,000 per turn. Oh my goodness. Is Sao Sao just going to bankroll us here? It would appear so. Holy smokes. Okay, that was too much. Apparently, I'm too greedy with that. Thirteen hundred per turn. Maybe it was Sao Sao that we were trading with. Okay, cool. And let's hope, let's knock on wood that Sao Sao doesn't uh, improve his access to food in between now and the uh, in the next ten turns. Okay, so. With that done. Chang Chung Ching Chong. I may have said some of that correctly. I may not have. Ah, uh, so we can wipe out this rebellion. Uh, but really, I think it might be more important to just lie in ambush here. And then just encamp nearby. And what I'm hoping here with this, is, and the reason I'm doing this is because Yan Bai Hu himself cannot get into our territory where he can replenish. So uh, what I'm hoping for is that we're able to spring on them with both armies as they move over here to maybe attack Ying Ching. That's what I would hope. Uh oh. Zhao Bo is tolerant. Can't really build anything, I don't think. No, I don't have enough money for that. So here we go. Another session of AI moves. I really wish we could say, like, don't ever accept this. And then the AI wouldn't bother us with it at all. But such a functionality does not yet exist and most likely never will. So I don't know what they're doing down here in the corner other than taking attrition. I knew it. I knew it. So, which army just got weakened? Oh, it was this guy that I paid all that money for. I knew he was a spy. Enemy spy activity extracts spy. Treachery. One of our supposedly loyal generals has emerged as a spy, defecting back to their masters and leaving us potentially disadvantaged. What a schmuck. You know, I really thought that person might be a spy when I recruited them. Pretty sure I commented as such. I'm wondering if they uh, took the ancillaries with them. I can't even remember right now what I had assigned them, so I wouldn't know if they did or they didn't. Uh, now we can finally pop in the here with Yan Bai Hu. We can share the spoils, which is going to lower loot for this army specifically, but give us income from banditry and lots and lots and lots of replenishment, which uh, I really want to get. Then with this other army, what we'll do is we'll just hang out nearby and we'll ambush. 
Okay. And we can upgrade in here. Well, we're earning plenty of money now, especially with that guy gone. So I suppose it didn't turn out as poorly as it could have because we just get extra money and the yellow turban army that we recruited him to defend against is over here. It's incredibly weak. It's taking attrition. So we don't really need him up here. And I'd say the worst that happened out of it all is that maybe we lost some ancillaries. Although if I recall, one of them... One of them was the chariot that always points south and cannot be turned around. So, and it had plus 10 satisfaction. So, I don't know. Maybe we lost a good a good ancillary. I'm going to go check and see if I can find that chariot. If he stole my, my stupid chariot thingy, I'm going to be upset. I will. All right, let's go see if we still have our chariot. Sansua declared war on Han Empire. Liu Zhang signed a peace treaty with Liu Bao. They have a faction succession. We've gotten ourselves a clay rat. <laughs> Who cares? Can I trust you? <laughs> You're legendary. You're not really, are you? No, you are. Okay. But you're 50. So nothing really going on in there that I care about all that much. Where would our little chariot thing be? I think he stole it. Oh, what a, what a jerk. He stole my chariot thingy. Here is a lesson in uh, getting over things. Ah, <sighs> I'm over it. Okay. Let's see. Uh, like one more turn here. One more turn. We have 12 food. Now this uh, this building chain requires tea. This one does not. Let us, let us. In the interest of earning some money, let us go ahead and build that, even though we don't really have any big construction cost reduction right now. And we'll go ahead and we'll send her off to supervise construction in Xindu. And right now our income is up, but we do want to be able to move out next turn. So, minus five reserves. What happens if you raid your own territory? Ah, maybe this is the way you lower public order in your, in your settlements. Raid your own settlements until public order approaches zero. Because I've been trying to figure out how exactly do we bring our public order down and improve our income from banditry and get our replenishment uh, either positive or at least neutral? Because right now we have minus 10% replenishment. And it would seem then that if we raid our own territory, it lowers public order. But then it also hurts reserves. Uh, but even though... Okay, even though our reserves are going down, it's still changing by one this turn. So they're still slowly climbing up. Okay, things are starting to make a little bit more sense. And then this army has lots of loot. So they have very, does it show it here? Minus 25% campaign movement range. But if we share the spoils, the reserves go up. Replenishment goes up. And because reserves will go up, it offsets the rating by the other army. So now if we look at the reserves over here, it's changing by five per turn, which doesn't see, it seems like it should be more, but I think we're okay. Public order is going to go down. And if we can get, we want to keep an eye on this and get our income from banditry up 
and our replenishment up. Okay, it's starting to make more sense to me here. Against Gongdu for 4,300. Uh, I'm going to reject. Uh, but that's also now telling me that our existing military contract against the Yellow Turban Rebellion is also over, right? Who is that? Looks like a, a unique character. And I really feel like I should know the name, but I just can't think of it right now. When Xiao commanded their vassal Liu Bei to join a war, Ma Chao declared war on Wenchu. Liu Bao requested Gang Sun Zan join their war against, who are you? Han Empire. Faction destroyed Kong, Fang, Jing. They were in Chen, if I recall. Zhang Jiang signed a peace treaty with Cao Cao. Faction destroyed Hei Yi. Faction developments. Okay, so we finished one of our researches. And Emperor is a distant figure to most. Other, more local leaders command far more respect. Uh, sparring partners, if you really want to read this, go ahead and pause it. But the relationship deepens between Yan Bai Hu and Pan Lin. Well, you know what? I'll read it. A friend of yours, full of zeal, challenges you to spar. And who are you to resist? As you size up you feel good, strong, ready. And surely enough, when the fight starts, you soon land blow after blow in a dazzling demonstration of skill. Before long and laughing, your friend has no choice but to yield. Ah ha ha ha. Our tributary hall is complete. We don't have anybody else that we can throw in there. And are there any... Ooh. Kong Fang Jing. Ooh, 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 ooh. You were... Just moments ago, you were a faction. What is this? Provincial Advisor. Is that a set item? Uh... I believe in one of my campaigns, I was really hoping to get a hold of a provincial advisor because the set bonus was, I think, really good. And yeah. Uh, you know what? There's no way I'm not recruiting you. Welcome to the fold. So we just got some decent items out of that, I would think. This is a set item, right? Mm. No, no, no. It was this one. No, it was this one. Was it really? There's There used to be at least one set item that provided a really, really, really massive reduction in corruption, I think, when combined with the the matching ancillary and it was a provincial administrator it was provincial something or advisor something i thought this might have been it i thought we might have been able to uh, buy it here for uh 1000 but no that's not the case that's okay though that's okay I, I don't mind having her here in fact let's go see if we can send her on assignment what would she do income from peasantry public order uh but lowers reserves or Decreases loot. 50% uh, income from peasantry. So where do we have higher income from peasantry? 90 in there. 90 here. Well, they're both base 90. So I guess we'll send her into Sindhu. We're back to minus 25% campaign movement range. Let's go ahead and share the spoils once more. Increasing our replenishment. <laughs> Public orders plus nine again. Gosh darn it. Are you still raiding?
Uh, but now you can raid. Okay, this is this is kind of funky, changing stances and feeling like I need to have two units in the same commandery doing this. Uh, not sure about that. Okay, what is your name again? Zhang Fei. That's right. And then you are Zhang Liao. And the reason you're familiar to me is because you, in the major or the regular campaign, you are a special character as part of Liu Biao's faction. And then I remember fighting you now at the beginning of my Wenshu playthrough. Okay. I knew I recognized that face. Okay, we're almost ready to turn around and attack them here. I really hope that he doesn't get there before we do. Uh, I don't know if... I don't think he'd be able to take it. He's our coalition member, though. Uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move into here. Is that the wrong army? <laughs> that was the wrong army. I moved the wrong army. I wanted this one. All right, well then here's what I'm doing. I'm just gonna move up with both, forget it. I'll ambush there, fine. Okay, undercover network. Trade influence income from banditry. What was the, the last thing that we got? It was a 6,000 population growth. Which leads us to... This is four turns. 10% income from banditry. That's, that's quite a bit, actually. 10%. So let's do that. And it only takes four turns as well. She's unhappy. Let's fix that. Blurp. There you go. So next turn, we should be able to get this lumber yard finally. It's taken forever. Another mercenary contract against the Ma faction, Ma Chao. No thanks. So they're part of Liu, Liu Bei. Oh, uh, we can see Sun Sua now has Jiang Xia the farmland, Lu Jiang the small city, and the lumberyard. But the AI is probably not managing his reckless luck per turn, so I would expect uh, Sun Sua to be dead before long. It's turn forty-six. I wonder if the if the AI has the reckless luck mechanic with Sun Sua or if they disable it for the AI because I would think he'd be dead by now. Ma Chao requested Liu Zhang join their war against Sun Sua. Liu Bao requested Gang Sun Zan join their war against Ma Chao. Gang Sun Zan commanded their vassal Gang Sun Xu to join a war. Is this it? Is this finally our moment to shine? It may very well be. Let us starve them out. And then we'll push up. Is there any uh, fatigue in battle winded? So let's switch over to a normal stance. 
Uh, this is what I can build. Government buildings construction cost reduction. It's 10% for both of them. But this one gets me a little bit extra income from banditry. So let's just do it. I mean, even if it's only a tiny smidgen of increased income from banditry, it, it helps because we've got a few uh, network thingies that increase income from banditry. And then we're researching another 10% income from banditry right now. Uh, this is a much more lucrative mercenary contract against Ma Chao, offered up by Sun Sua. How far away is uh, Ma Chao, though? So he's gone all the way down to here. We are on the verge of completing this commandery of Jian An. We're going to get that lumber yard. So that may free us up to head north and actually attack Ma Chao as mercenaries. So let's try once more accepting a mercenary contract for a nice lump sum of money. And I'm realizing now that I forgot to actually um, fight this. <laughs> so we're starving them out. They're going to take attrition for a turn or two. Unless they attack us right now. No, they didn't attack, so we'll wait, probably. Sun Sua contracted Yan Bai Hu as a mercenary. So like nine turns and then this runs out, right? I guess is the way that would read. Okay, massively in our favor. Guess we can delegate. Okay, so there should be no more Yellow Turban Rebellion down here where we are. And we finally, let's uh, show this by ownership, have two whole commanderies. And so we can really think uh, about what our next moves are. And where exactly is Machowski here? Okay, so that's the iron mine at Runan. And then he's in the lumber, the forest. The Lumberyard at Luoyang. And he has Nanyang. And he's got the Trade Port at Luoyang. Uh, it's, he's really far away. He's really far away. But I think what we're going to do, what we're going to try to do, is send one or both armies up there and go fight Ma Chao. I think that's a good idea. Uh, it could be a, a nice way for us to make lots of money, right? I like the idea of it. And in the meantime, maybe down here we just build up uh, for our food and, you know, get our income even more under control. We can get an additional 3% uh, upkeep reduction for ranged units and an additional 50 income from banditry. This lumber yard has been conveniently upgraded for us. This gives us plus six food. And if we wanted to, I can't switch it because it's already building. Uh, but let's see. Now uh, I could increase our research rate, which not a bad idea, I don't think. Let's see. Can I invite any of these people to join a coalition?
Leo Yang, who should still be at war with Wang Lang. Yeah. Uh, where, where'd you go in here? Come on, where are you? Quit. Quit hiding. Oh! Oh, are they no longer at war? No, they are at war. So, okay, well. Interesting. Suddenly, suddenly now they're not. <laughs> and who is Zhu Pingshang? I imagine they are neutral. Like a nobody. Where are you at? Who are you? Okay, so now let's go to uh, attitude. No. Diplomacy. Do coalitions show up in here? Uh, sort of, I guess. Hua Xin. Vassal of Liu Yao. Uh, they kind of grew. They kind of grew. They like military access. So for four fifty, they'd give us military access. Sure. I guess we'll do that for now. Let's go back to Liu Yao. Coalition to bring balance. I like that. I can offer you food. How wealthy are you? Uh, pretty wealthy. Yeah, okay. I think I want to do this. Trade all my food for 417 more per turn. I like that. Okay, it's going to take us a while to feel okay about that, I guess. And uh, I'm going to sneeze any minute now. Any moment. Okay, I think it passed. That was a big sneeze. I feel another one coming on in just a moment. Uh, let's see. What else can I do in here? I want to know who is this over here. Oh, okay, but let's back out now that we have a new coalition member. It didn't like highlight the little circle. But we're earning 1475 per turn. Can build more food or uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the lumber yard or the bamboo fields, whatever it is. It's a lumber yard, but this is bamboo fields. And then next turn, I can do this one, and then we can get another bandit camp. Oh, I love it. And I think that's really all we can do right now. Uh, no, this army can move. Uh, well, let's go all the way over to here. And let's share the spoils, increasing our income up to 1,800 and creating more food. Suddenly, we have a lot of food. And this is a skill point for our administrator. So 
So we'll do the melee armor piercing damage and melee attack rate and authority and satisfaction. Why not? Boosting him up a little bit more. Uh, any worthwhile characters? Lee Ann looks new. Aged 23. Careless. Feared. Formidable. So how bad is Careless? Ah, bad enough. But look at all that instinct. Dude's got a ton of instinct. Plus 20 instinct. Uh, but it's only enough to get him up to 110, so no thanks. Nothing else has opened up in here. We need more territory before we can take advantage of the next administrator position. And we're 40 prestige away from hitting the next rank. Do we, by chance, have a trade agreement that we can pursue? No. And what's our bandit network again? Two turns. And we'll get 10% income from banditry. And then I guess we could go that way. 20% upkeep from for melee cavalry. Seems good to me. Uh, but let's end our turn. We will become a vassal of Ma Chow. No, we have a mercenary contract against you. So now it's going to be kind of curious to see like which way are we going to be pulled campaign wise with this uh, between the mercenary contract and our forming coalition. It is the Laba Festival. It is the day of the Laba Festival. As is the tradition, you gather your officers together and tell the chefs to prepare the traditional Laba Kangi. A simple dish while traveling the roads, but the mix of rice, beans, and dried fruits lifts the spirits. Actually, sounds kind of yummy right now. Even though I've never had it, and I have no idea if I'd enjoy it or not. Uh, next thing we're going to do with this army is... I guess we want to head towards Xindu, because we want to go uh, act on our uh, mercenary contract. So let's just take both armies. We'll move normally, I guess. Am I still sharing the spoils here? I am. So as I move, I get the extra replenishment and increase the banditry within our lands while moving. Okay. Okay, so I guess we can do one more quick turn. Okay, sorry about the, uh, the radio silence there. I was... Blowing my nose. I guess like I have allergies that are flaring up or something all of a sudden. Okay, Hu Mao declared war on Yell Turban Rebellion. They have a faction succession. They are then destroyed and then they reemerge. Wow, that was quite the roller coaster of emotions. Faction developments, Snakes of Dongping. That is our 10% income from banditry, all done being researched. We can build here. We can build here. We actually have some money. We're heading north by northwest to fulfill our mercenary contracts against Ma Chow. Uh, we got a handful of turns to get up there. I think we're going to be able to do it. I think we're going to be okay. And we're going to see how it plays out in the next episode when we come back because we're going to end this right here.
I hope you're enjoying it. Let me know if you are, please, with comments or thumbs up. Or if you have anything else that you, you know, want to share, or even if you're not enjoying it, I'm always open to criticism. And outside of that, I hope to see you next time. Until then, you have yourself a good afternoon and take care.